We are um, the sixth and final episode. Um, it's the story about Jack Parsons and Marjorie Cameron, and it's a, um, a love story, um, really. Uh, tonally, it's quite different from the rest of the, the series, um, but it's a beautiful insight into uh, their sort of twisted minds and, and, and uh, Jack Parsons' life and um, who he was and, and, and their love story predominantly. Um, told in yeah, 40, 40 minutes, like 45 minutes. <laughs> so it's, it is condensed, but it's um, it's as mad as, as as their kind of life and relationship was. Um, and Sean is is, is the, obviously the writer of it, and he told a great love story. And, yeah, we had a blast. Shot it in Prague, um, and it's obviously set in Pasadena. So I got on a plane from California <laughs> to come out to film it. In Prague, in Prague, which was meant to be California. Yeah. Um, but it was good. Uh, yes. Um, when I first read the script, I didn't realize that it was based on actual people. I've worked with Sean Couch before on The Exorcist, and he had sent it to me. I mean, that was such a such a trip to get to play that kind of dark role, and then this woman is um, she's she's on the surface as you were just saying she's quite proper and put together but she's no crude yeah, and no. she's she's quite modern and, and advanced and free spirited for someone in 1946 certainly her art and her poetry reflects that and reading it not knowing it was based on real people I was struck first and foremost by the love story of it and the idea that these people were just eternally drawn to each other and once they met although Jack believed he had conjured her into being which didn't really fly with her <laughs> she was like I don't think yeah. so um, but they they were madly in love but also calmly in love I think it was almost like they met and it was a foregone conclusion like oh yeah. we're going to be together that's that's it then. and and I can really relate to that feeling and the pain of being separated it's like you're being cut apart by some giant scissor blades the story so he drops the beaker in, in the beginning of the episode and it's told this, the whole narrative is, is as the beaker drops to the floor um, obviously the final um, conclusion you'll see but um, and it's and it's this it's pieced together and he's kind of doing it all in his head but it's 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 too much dreamlike I would say um, recounting from when he starts right to the, the bitter end when I did the Walking Dead two years ago um, I did not know what the Hallmark Christmas movie audience was going to think about that. Right. But I discovered really quickly there's a massive overlap. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, people who don't watch Hallmark other times of the year, like Walking Dead fans or Lore fans or Exorcist fans, they do put on the Christmas channel at Christmas time because it's so festive, it's so nice for families getting together, it eases the tension, all that stuff. But the rest of the year, they actually love the suspense and the horror and all that. So when I do the conventions, I'm really delighted to find that about one out of every three people that come up to my table is is there. They're like, yeah, you were great on that and whatever. But the Hallmark Christmas, <laughs> that's what they really want to talk about. Um, and they're just, I love doing them. They, they make me as happy as they make people to watch them. Uh, you know, we I think we realized early on that, that while it's noble to want to take a successful podcast and just how can we do exactly what it's doing in the video format, that some changes need to be made. You know, that it, to connect better with the viewers, some changes need to be made. I realized this um, just a couple months ago. Uh, I never told you this. I realized that I should have realized this before we filmed season one, but <laughs> the main character of the podcast is me. And I don't mean that in an egotistical way. Yeah. I'm the voice you hear in every episode, right? So everything else that you're learning is like secondary contextual stuff. My voice is the main character. But in the TV show, when you throw on Burke and Hare, they're the main characters of the episode. And so 
when you throw me in the mix or you throw in a two minute animation sequence or we come out of this and show you footage from another island with dolls on it, like those things pull you out of the moment of connecting with the character. And so we want to keep that consistent from podcast to, to TV. You're connected with the character in the podcast because I'm there. You're connected with the characters in the TV show because it's more character focused and letting those scenes play out. And yeah. due to the nature of media, podcast, it's more intimate, you can go deeper, you can tell, you can take people on a, on a, on a, on a ride that, that otherwise in TV would be convoluted, in podcast, the way he tells it, it makes perfect sense. So in season two, we've, we've simplified the stories, we've taken the best story, the best characters from Aaron's podcast from each episode, and we've kind of condensed those stories, not making it, it's still excellent and rich, but we have a great beginning, middle, and end. And we also have this great consistency of tone where we don't have a bunch of different animation in different episodes or different, um, um, you know, uh, the way we've treated archival is the same, but it definitely feels more, and it's totally different. I think the, the strength of this is no other show like it on TV. But tonally, it's got a black mirror. It's got our own kind of, you know you're watching the episode. You know you're watching the show no matter what episode you're watching. Yeah. yeah. We've got, we've got six stories, four of them are from the podcast, two of them are brand new for the TV show. Um, one of them, as he mentioned, is Hinter Kaifak, which is the, uh, on the farm was the, was the uh, podcast episode title, uh, family in Germany in the woods. In a, famous story, yeah. famous case. It's a, it's a murder mystery that's never been solved, although if you talk to Sean Crouch, our showrunner, he'll tell you that he, he solved it. we solved it on the TV show. <laughs> once, you, once you play it out, like you know, on a set, it becomes a lot more obvious. Um, but we've got the story of Mary Webster, the witch in Massachusetts in the 1670s, um, Burke and Hare in Edinburgh, Scotland, the, the, they were the resurrection, well, they were resurrectionists, they were killing people, they were serial killers. Uh, let's, let's not be coy. Um, we've got Countess Bath. Yeah, Countess um, Elizabeth Bowtry, um, the bloody Countess, right? Jack Parsons, who is Countess the... Countess Bath, you, you, you know, she, drink, she bathes in blood in order to stay young and, and maintain the fountain of youth. And it's, it's a brutal episode. Dark it's energy. A episode, yeah. Oh, what she did to these young women is terrifying. Yeah, it's, it's a brutal. good lineup. It it's is. a really good lineup. 